So into this restorative session, we're going to begin in a reclining bound angle pose. So that bound angle pattern is really focusing on um, the connectivity here into your hip, into your torso, your connection of torso into your hips. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to sit directly in front of your bolster that's angled up vertically behind you. You want to have your footing so when it's connecting the layers of the legs, I take a belt that's buckled up and I bring it overhead around my waist, below my waistband to the back of the pelvis. So feel where that um, awareness is with the belt at the back of the pelvis where it helps to center your hips. And then this belt over the tops of your feet. I'm gonna loosen mine up. I think I have an idea that this was, was short enough, but I wanna have enough space so that when I'm sitting upright on my sitting bone shape, that my knees move out and there is a little bit of tension. Right, so the tension will help produce that connection between my core and my legs into my feet. So grasp will hold and slide the blocks under the legs. Okay. Now, as you recline, you want to feel that the support of the shoulders are on the bolster. So release that. Go ahead and head on into this position. Feel where your spine centers back. If you have that extra belt or scarf, before you center any sand on your rib cage, I want you to give a try of stretching open the chest as much as you have a sensation of a belt on the legs. You also have a sensation of the belt grasp with the hands and feeling the shoulders pressing back into the bolster. So coordinate the pull with the hands. Now if you don't have a belt or an extra um, uh, strand to hold to, to hold that overhead, uh, you can also interlace your fingers and stretch your arms back this way. Okay, so you can turn the hands inside out and reach back. With the extra element of the belt, you can actually work a bit with the circulation in your shoulders, unless you lose it. Okay, so separate yourself from that extension of the chest muscles, let go, it was temporary, momentary, 20 to 30 seconds there. And then take your sand or rice bag and apply it so you first have it lengthwise from heart to belly. So it's straight down that full chamber of the core. And you'll feel when the sand is supported right below the heart, that's where you want it to get heavy, okay? So feel where that weight is of the sand and feel where the shoulders open gradually in the front shoulders and a squeeze of the shoulder blades back to the bolster. Okay, stay with the pattern. And we're gonna start with a focus into our breathing, centering the mind. Inhale slow. And let the exhalation relax out of your mouth. Empty the lungs. Really emphasize that there's a fine tuning of the breath that occurs in the beginning of the practice as if you're tuning an instrument. So let the eyes and the muscles in the face soften, feeling where the jaw relaxes back and down into the body. And as you create the motions of breathing, 
The pose becomes kind of a landmark, just a place for you to center into. Kind of like if you're getting to a book and you have a bookmark in it and you're gonna start into this next chapter. So think of this as another chapter into your body today. Feel and respect the next inhalation, preparation. Feel the belly actually expand when you breathe in. And experience the settling of the core as you exhale. Visualize that the breath is something like a wave in the body, right? It experiences surges. And the interesting portion of the breath phase is when you're in breath and you feel that surge and experience the end of the in breath. We're working today with the phases of holding and then just letting it go. With another few moments here, following the wave of breath in and empty out. Now, arriving at a point where your lung pressure feels like you're involved in strengthening your breathing muscles. So it's not a real passive experience. You're actually needing the pose to be rather gentle so that you can strive with your lungs, right? A regular um, human habit would be not necessarily using the fullness of them. So when you in-breath, slow, four counts, and then notice that phase and that moment of pause, and then exhalation, relaxation, facial muscles really enjoy that emptying of the lungs. And then you might experience a pause. And then let's notice when we change the shape that the breath um, usually is retained often in our feeling and restorative in the, the torso. It's like a retainer of the breath. So consider that as kind of a, a spot for motion out of your midsection. So if you want to stay in reclining, Congress pose longer, you're welcome to. It's a, it's a pretty good nesting pose, isn't it? It's like you just opened up this new chapter and you're still looking at that first paragraph. So stay here in the back. But let's move the sand aside. The spine remains the same. We're going to unbuckle the belt. And once you unwind the legs, feel the knees starting to motion up. And let's lift up the right leg and cross that foot, that ankle to the left knee. And then almost an immediate action of movement. We'll take the ball or a block and place it at the very top of the outer left thigh, and then smush that object that's beside the thigh, ball, block, I want you to try to smush into it. If the object feels too, um, it's too tender in the actual skin to have something that's pushing, that has pressure, you could also wad up some towels for this one. So we'll take the left hand, we'll reach, we're gonna take the knee, and pull towards you and feeling where the muscles combine in the shoulder and try to transfer this awareness so that it's an energy that you're pulling. You're actually really pulling the leg towards you. So try to keep with that. Keep with that connection, feeling the right hip and if there is some aversion to it, which would be likely if it's an intense sensation. Instead of pumping it back and forth and kind of prodding through the joint, 
See if you can stay steady with this one. Stay with this piece of information. Reach the right arm back overhead. Try to lengthen through the waist. Noticing the eyes resting for a few moments and feeling. Increasing the sensation via holding the knee and decreasing the sensation by letting go of the knee. So you have a choice. You would likely feel something either way, whether you hold or you let go, but you will decide your intensity. And I'm going to add a layer to this one today. So if you want to stay with this for the next 10, 15 seconds, I would recommend you continue on this hip, this direction. If you want to add to it, you're going to let go of the knee, bring the right arm down, keep the right leg, but now cross it over. I think you'll keep your leg anyway, but cross the leg over the left so it's completely tossed over the left leg. And then move your knees to the right, swivel them over. Likely there will be a block there to help you support your legs. Now, you might slide a little bit down from the bolster. That's regular habit here. But this left IT band can get a nice stretch. So you're either in the pose right before this one, right, holding the right knee, or you cross the leg and you're Pressing the leg over the left to feel through that left um, IT band. Yeah, this is a nice one too. It just depends on your knees and your needs as well. Come back in center and switch sides. So we'll uncross. You might scoot back up to your bolster, but use the bolster as a kind of a hook to lift up the, the, the mid spine. So I don't want to be too, too much of my lumbar is tucked up to the bolster. It's okay if there's space here between the bolster and your, your box, okay? So left leg lifts, crosses to the right knee. And then as you lean over to the ball or the block, right on the very upper external thigh on the right side, and then tilt your body weight into that object and hold the left knee. Give, reach through the left side, back with the arm. Center the ribs and then go for reaching. The reach is based on feeling centered behind the heart. Feeling the reactivities. Kind of a fun word, reactivities. Working with that. And if you have a ball, you really do want to kind of try to smush it, like you're trying to crush the ball. And you might feel the connection of that direction with your right thigh down, over, tilted. And this left hip. You know, kind of gets feels a little bit more um, a spread of circulation through the buttock, through the glute. Now, those that want to stay in this, stay. Or maybe you don't want to stay in it, but you feel like it's useful. And those that want to change, cross the left leg over the right. Let your arms be casual here. And the knees are going to move over to the left. Now, if you get stuck, use props, right? Get your block over there, set it, and, and be in awareness that it doesn't need to be exactly put together perfectly. You're touching a uh, prop, every arm, um, every limb is positioned perfect. Consider the awareness wave in the right leg, it would be all right leg. Or you could be back here to this pose. No problem. You could always go a little back and forth and play with movement in your glutes. You're free to do that. We're all kind of sharing practice and our home spaces. It's great. So there is an energy of shared, um, shared practice, but you do have the freedom, especially in your own space, to do a little of each or 
even doing a different version. If there's a version to the version. Okay, now I move from this idea of holding or crossing the legs, whichever version you're in. And I like it to be that we come out of this position and we all arrive into a pose where you use a block and you place it under the back of your pelvis. Come here, block. Okay. So I lift up my rear and I lift up into a pelvic tilt. Now my bolster is not getting away from me. So I'm going to push down so I have my bolster under me. But I also have a block under my, my rear. Okay. Now, if I lift my um, block up to the next tier to a little bit higher, you might like that for your, your back muscles, even though it's a back bend to the pose. Those are remarkably helpful if you have an achy back, which I always find polarity of thought, but it does work. So you can have the block flat, right? So either be this height under your pelvis, or it would be the mid height, not this height, but we got flat or the mid. And then as you're there, you're going to add sand across the top of the thighs and place that sand so that when you stretch your legs straight down, your feet separate to where they're very comfortable. You don't focus on the feet having to be um, serving a purpose of perfection of the body. I want you to work on this whole front rim of the hips. Put the blanket that you have under your head back off the bolster. Move it away. Yeah. If you happen to find a belt somewhere, whether it's the one you were just using a little while ago or it's the one you found, you're going to open up the chest. And I would really encourage you to, to sense a little bit here how to get on that block and then feeling the front bones, all front bones here, starting to feel open quality, just openness, spaciousness. And taking it to the, the next and basically the final level in this phase of the chapter here. If your feet are wanting to turn out, turn them out on this one. Don't focus on toes out, flexing perfection. We're focusing towards spaciousness. And try that for a change, right? Letting the body have a feeling of splaying. Not explaining, but splaying. Now, if you're pulling on your belt and you feel that awareness and kind of tenacity through the arms, Try to create that sensation in the upper arms of strength. Try to hold on to something. Okay, and then let go of your belt and bring your arms so that they both reach together over your chest straight, interlacing and stretch your wrists. So if the palms push up, turn the hands inside out. Stay with this for about 10 seconds where you're actually stretching your fingers, yep, and your wrists, and you can feel if you move your fingers interlaced, moving a little bit back and forth to stretch the hands. It seems a little simple, right? But it's, it's a good one to practice daily to stretch your wrists. And then as I move the arms almost overhead, but not quite, I'm going to maintain the length through the arm muscles. Okay, let go of the clasp, the interlace, move your sand off of your thigh. And when we bring our knees up and point them up, the feet pressing. Now the feet have had a little bit of freedom. So let's rock through the bottom of your foot from the heel to the ball. And then lift up your hips and slide your block away. Okay? So, so let's take it so that when we turn to our left side, we're going to move our bolster across. Okay? So you're going to shift your bolster across your mat. 
And we'll take it so that the blankets are centered like so, a quarter fold. Do you want to fold them up so you've got two blankets stacked? So they're basically the height of your, a little bit lower than your bolster. Some people might have blankets that are a little thicker. You might be stacking towels. You want to have the head so it's a little lower, right? It's not higher than the rib center. So let's have a block overhead. And then we'll have a ball on the inside of the right leg. And then as you center your sand, if you have that support, lift it up to your hip. And then layer so that the waist is over the bolster. The blankets are tucked in. And as you rise through the waistline and reach your hand to your block, it's nice to have something that is helping you feel the outreach, but also feeling a destination, okay, with the hand. Now, if this doesn't work for you to read overhead, you could let your right arm relax on your side or be down besides your left hand. Okay, so the emphasis would be to work on finding ease and the experience of laying through your sides. Okay, this is a follow-up from the beginning when we were working on the front. Now we're working on the very side zone. So reaching or centering your upper arm. And relax your face. I know that sometimes what you're, when you're following, you get the idea, you get the visual, and then following with your eyes resting. Trusting the pose will be here for a little bit. Let your weight of your head rest into the blankets. Now feel the tug of the breathing with the rib cage. So as we expand our breath and we feel that costal breathing, so the muscles between the ribs expand and contract. You can feel that rhythm. And finally, take a moment where your right arm is comfortable. It's not striving, it's not forcing. For some of us, that could remain the same where it was overhead. For some, we've got to find where it honestly is easier on our shoulder and our neck. And just allow that right side body, waist side body, the torso, hip body, to gradually stretch. So from feeling this side, feeling the weight into the bolster, we're going to turn to a cat-cow blend. So when you move your sand aside, okay, and we're going to turn, so we're, we're, we rotate in through the spiral of the spine, so we're going to move downwards with our hands. So I want you to take the body position, so you actually just take a simple rotation, so that the hands and the knees are supported by the, um, the, purely just the mat, but if you're on a surface, you need a blanket under your knees, add that, but combine the back muscles as you round your spine, bring the chin towards your chest. And then when you inhale, feel that motion of the rib cage stretching forwards. 
Exhale, round your back, chin to chest. Inhale, stretching the ribs forwards. Now, as you come back to neutral, we're going to hook the toes under and lift up the knees. And as you stretch back to a downward facing dog, you might pedal out the feet, alternate bending the knees, but emphasizing the coordination of both the upper and lower body in the opposing direction. So I have the hands pushing the floor away, the feet pushing down into the floor. So I want to find that blend of press and push, or is it the same, right? So it's like I'm pushing away, right? And I'm trying to press down, and the weight of my head dangles from my spine. Yeah, carry on into it for a few more moments. Breathe. Yeah, it's important to find a way to let the body invert. Just for the circulation into the organs, if anything, to actually let them rest in the store. Now come forward so that the knees are down and the tops of the feet rest. And then you actually stretch your hips forward on the bolster and lift up the heart. Feel this for a moment. Feel the length, feel the possibility of the arms balancing, kind of coexisting under you. And then I want you to try to let your body turn to the side change on the other hip, right hip down, and you're going to switch. So you're going to have to break it down the, the ball or block on the inside of the left leg. And then when you switch through, experiment here with the openness of the rib cage. So I find it useful to, to move my spine and feel as it lengthens, okay? And there's that side reach. And I move my sand to my hip. Now, if you have multiple sands, you can add some more to your waist. But I'm turning a little bit closer towards the screen than I would in this pose naturally. But you might find your best with your head turned, the right side of your brain on your blanket. Okay? If you're comfortable with the back of your head on the blanket, you can also work with this spiral line through the waist, through the composition of the arm reaching. It's kind of nice to have that complex, full band, the diaphragmatic band. Okay? So as you lengthen, that's the band you're in, the diaphragmatic band. Okay, as you lengthen, the left hand might reach overhead and touch something. And if it doesn't have a touchdown, that's okay. This is an important lead up into where we're going with this, this chapter here. So feel where the waist has as much range as possible. It's like working with our condition. If your back is wincing on this, if it's really unhappy, be certain that you can let the weight sink into your right hip and then let the left arm wander back. It doesn't have to look a certain way. The, the deal is the centering process and then spinning out from the center. However we kind of work with these versions, side spaces, back spaces, front spaces. Now start to ease up on the left arm. So if it's overhead, you might lower it down. And anything that takes the heat out of the shoulder. And so we want to give that shoulder a little bit of ease. You know how we've taken the arm across before and stretched the deltoid. That kind of pattern, just try to cool the shoulder. Shoulder cool. Now from the shoulder cooler, we're going to this time roll into our right 
step. And I want you to shift your body to come up and move your stand aside, of course. We're going to keep the legs about the same. So what we'll do is come on up, move your uh, ball aside, and then also behind you, you're going to want one blanket. So let's take a seat on a bolster, sit on up, move a blanket aside, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and then we've got a blanket behind us that's in um, a flat kind of quarter fold. We've got a couple blocks towards the front. So reposition yourself on your space so that you're seated with your left knee bending, your left foot towards the right inner thigh, and right leg is stretching open. And open might be for you a, um, a pattern of this thigh rolling out, but I want you to try to push through the heel. So what's open is the, the hip, is what's open. Placing a ball or a block under the left knee. Either one works fine. Usually you'll have one that you prefer. And this will be a, um, a pose where we're working on the side body once again. But we're, we're introducing the element of the core, um, kind of creating that core collaboration of inner lift. So let's try, let's take our belt and we're going to move the belt to create um, a small loop. The looping of your belt is not required for this to happen, this pose, but I'm gonna offer that idea. So I've got a small loop, however you can combine with your idea of a yoga belt, whatever you have, and then place it carefully under the right foot and push out into that foot. And we're going to move the belt so it's behind your back. So it's overhead or around your waist behind you. Hold it with your left hand. Give yourself plenty of slack so this is relatively easy on your shoulder joint. So if you feel like it's, you know, kind of piercing sensation, that's too much, right? So you want to give yourself more belt. So reach for your left knee with your right hand, because the left hand is actually occupied. And then from the body turning, feel below the chest the opportunity to rotate, below the chest. Yeah. So feeling the zones that may tend to live forward and, and basically slump, you're trying to kind of rebalance that zone. So make it simple for your body body organization here. Hold the knee, hold the belt, and then just let the body turn to the left. We're gonna turn, we're gonna maybe turn our head. You don't have to, you can have your head centered looking towards your screen or take a, take a risk and look back. Let your eyes close. Now let go with your left hand, and then the right hand is going to reach to the left, the right leg, sorry, to the belt. So I'm going to hold the belt with my right hand now, and bend my elbow as if I could touch down to the leg, which is possible. So I give myself this range. Now this belt behind me, I could still hold it with my left hand again. Kind of a, a, an interesting balance for your your core, isn't it? You're all the multi-level awareness in your core muscles, your side core. But you might let go of that idea and bring your left arm over the side of your face and turn your head to look down towards the right leg. Yeah, this is particularly intense. Breathe with your experience in the position, not waiting to breathe a little bit. Breathe whatever you can. And now we we'll bring the left arm back and down. And we're going to come up, and this time what I'm going to have us do is carefully from this leaning to this upright, kind of really lengthening your spine. And then take the belt off your foot 
and move the ball and block from under the left leg. And then you're gonna lower down that left knee so that lowers to the floor. You wanna use your stance continuously on that left hip. Door number one would be, I bring my right foot down, my knee is open, and I'm taking a counter twist to the right. That's the, the comfortable route. Door number two is going to be to bring the right leg and cross it over the left. If this works for your knee, I aim to try for it, okay? If you want to do this, but it's just a little much yet, you could also opt for a block under your foot in front of you, right like that. Okay, so that will still have you relengthen. So that's an option. Bring your waist, try to get a little bit of this kind of rotunda work. You're going to move a little back and forth. And then I want you to have your elbows open and then twist right. Bring your left elbow to the right thigh. <laughs> Notice how sometimes your thigh tries to go with you. Well, maybe you didn't know we were trying for it, but. Your thigh almost gives the instruction as well as your arm. It's going to try to make it easier. So I want you to try to let the thigh stay the thigh with the knee bending. And then reach your right hand back to the blanket or to a block. And then hook that elbow and really work with the arm, left arm, the stomach muscles and the rotation, Whew. twisting, breathing. Now it's a very gut oriented pose. There's a lot of digestive um, energy in this position. So we don't necessarily want this to be a punch to the gut, right? We wanna feel that there is a dynamic um, awareness from this position. So if when you put your arm to the, left, to the uh, right leg, you might try opening the left hand, open. You might twist with your right hand supporting you behind. Now unwind and move your block from behind to the front. Take the right foot in front of you on top of a block. So if those had a block before, are going to stay with the block. And then as you're reaching behind you, um, hold at your hips first. Uh, hold the base of the sides of the waist and tilt forward. So if you're trying to look at something that's over the block on the other side. So keep the right hip open, the knee open. Now as you come up, we're going to move the right leg back. So take the sand off left, stretch the right thigh so that the knee points up, my hands go to the floor and then I Sweep the right leg back, and I feel the position of the top of your back thigh on the bolster, so the toes relax, the hand center, and maybe you use a block under your forehead. You can also use your blanket, your other blanket. Center the hips as well as you can, feeling kind of where the, the awareness and the attention is of settling and relaxing to the back leg. Try to firm up the connection into that left thought. It's not hard to do on this pose. It's obviously the, um, the anchor of the pose, right, is into the hip. So if the best you, you feel you want to do here is to kind of clutch onto the pose, like you're pressing your arm down, your energy is, is intense, you might try to bring your head down. And if the floor is too far and it's too much stretch and you hit use a block or a bunch of blankets under your head. 
and breathe through the back. Try to widen the back ribs, the thick back ribs. Now with a few more moments here, get a feeling of this pattern of the weight moving forward now. Okay, feel how you can kind of pitch your weight forward. And now when we switch sides, I want you to keep that pitching forward pattern, okay? So what we'll do is we'll bring the hands to push the elbows up, walk the hands in, and then when you swing that right leg forward, take poplar's pose right away, feet together, knees out, and then pitch forward. So try to lean into it. Yeah, you might feel the ankles are a little different one side to the next in the last set we did. It's nice to feel the, the little things that are starting to spatially Kind of get some more hydration and fluidic opening. One ankle could feel very different than the other, just from the stretches through the legs. I hope. Okay, from pitching forward, come up right, slide that right foot in towards the bolster, move the left leg straight out. And then putting your sand on your right thigh on the block or ball under the right knee. And then we'll, we'll take it so we'll have that simple direction once again. We'll use our belt. Keep in mind a lot of this practice is kind of balanced repetition from one side to the next. It's, it's definitely an exercise. It's like it's, it's a way to support our health and feeling some connection mentally through the sequence. So when we hold onto the belt with the right hand, the belt under the left foot, we're going to turn the waist to the right and bring the left hand to that right leg. Now, one side you might do the knee pretty easy, and one side you might go, wow, it's not quite the same dimension that I can work with. And it could be a factor of where your left leg is stretched out. It could be farther open, or farther in. And it also could be the side of your back and its mobility or your shoulder. So do the best that you can to balance it out. But I would refrain from trying to pull the knee and, jet and lift it up and kind of cry at the joint. Feel what's, what's permissible for you on the side. Just accept it. It's important. So my right arm is going to try to wander away from my back and stretch out my shoulder. Turn the waist. Try to hold the belt so that you can actually feel your right shoulder. I'll show my left one, but it's your right shoulder for this pose. You want to try to get that to feel like it's, it's externally moving so it's turning open, not rotating in. So I want you to feel when you hold that belt that you're externally rotating. And you'll feel a little bit through the pecs, up into the collarbones, to the pec muscle, to the shoulder, and then right into rotator cuff. Okay, turning the waist. Breathe. Now reach this time with the left hand first to the belt. Let the right hand remain slightly holding on to that behind you. And then as you hold on to the belt with your left hand, bend your elbow. Now you can break free. You can stretch your right arm open, over the side of the face. You can keep it behind you. You be the decider of the waist, sensation and pull. Yeah, maybe doing less than you anticipate as far as force into the waist would be ideal. 
and then noticing that saturation of your 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 lungs, right? Your breath, that saturation rate. See if you can focus on breathing in slow, and then exhalation, letting go. Maybe it pulls you in deeper to the stretch. Now my head can turn towards the sky. It can look down. Now as you let go of your belt and you come up, Let's slip out of the belt and simple. Left foot, either, well, actually, let's all, let's do it this way, version. We'll put our left foot on top of the block. We kind of join the same idea. So if you do end up taking a twist with your foot on the block and not across your right leg, that's, you're already set up for it. So we're all in the same level, right on this position. And you want it to be kind of level, um, individual like your your level so when i lean forward to that left foot i can feel the circulation in my hip and i'm feeling where the lower back kind of the lower rung of the back above the buttocks it usually feels like there's like this tiny little imprint in the center of the dent so when you come up to sitting, those that are going to twist are going to keep it right here. And now I'm going to block behind you, right hand to left knee and twist. So these simple. It's good. It's good medicine. Just right here, simple twist. Those that are going to add on a little bit of different layers, you're going to move the ball or block from under the knee away. Remove it and then place your left foot over the right leg. Hook the elbow and go in. Okay? Go into the pose of your choice. This is important, right? To go into the pose. So if I hook the elbow and it feels like I can get just a little more depth in my stomach twist, I might bring the leg across, really feel it hugged in, and then hook the elbow and you feel like you lean forward, you tilt, and then you push and lift up. Then your hand comes back. It's a very thorough kind of juicing here. It doesn't, it doesn't stop blending for a little bit of time. So kind of let it go, breathe as it's churning. Feel the belly expand and contract. And the right arm could straighten, it might feel helpful. And then as you're turning, whether your foot is on the floor or on the block, doesn't matter on this, you still have the attention of rotation to the left. If this shoulder's rolling in like that, once you like this pattern, I want you to try to move it back. Keep it simple. Right hand could be moving the block farther behind you. Breathe. Feel your seat center. Now I feel like there's a natural tug of war in the back muscles. So nestle into that space, right, where you might feel the most in your shoulder, back of your shoulder coordination into your stomach. And then as you release the pose, you're gonna move your block out to the side and then bring the left foot up to that block in front. Take kind of this final bow into this pattern. Your hands could be anywhere. It could be your thighs, it could be a bolster, they could be waist, it could be behind the bolster kind of pushing them directly externally. So I reach my thumb out to the side, open. That could be the thumb open press. Now, as I move back to pigeon, I'm gonna remove any um, belt that I have in the way. This is important. 
And then as I move my sand aside, I'm going to take the left leg. So when you reach back, you want to try to expand at the top of the, the left thigh. So that hip flexor and that mixture of quadricep flexor and the rotation now in that right inner thigh. So I'm going to move my right knee back towards the bolster. My belly button faces downwards, maybe slanted, but it's a little downwards. And as the left foot relaxes, start to go into the pose. So that might mean your hands go forwards. Maybe the elbows sink down. And maybe the forehead touches the block. It's up to you. The top of the back foot is relaxing. With the spine center, the brain lengthening, at the brain stem. Now, depending on your interest in this pose, some like some uh, have a little bit of different uh, thoughts about it or experiences in their hip. So let's take us, ourselves into a little bit of a medley here. So I want the medley to be able to create um, patterns of movement that are symmetrical in the body, right? So we have symmetry when we use things in balance. So we're going to work with that before we come back, before we come onto our backs. So what we'll do is kind of entertain this idea. There's, there's quite a bit of variety in this option. And um, I'm trying to communicate that you have some individuality coming up. You can customize it for yourself. So toe under on the left foot, walk the hands back in. And as you press down to your hands, as you lift up your hips, Slide the right leg back and lower the knees to the blank. Okay. Move your bolster so it's all the way to the front of your mat space. And I want you to have the bolster there and your hands on it too. So how about this idea? You can have the arms so that the palms face in and you're reaching kind of razor sharp with the arms. And you could also have your palms down if you don't like that intensity. So door one is my arms facing, palms in, head center of the arms. It's not to touch the floor. Okay? So either here or palms down. And reserve a few moments for that, that kind of energy reaching into the arms. A little bit of electricity, like stretching through the shoulders. Okay, let your head center between the arms for a few more moments. Okay, now that the arms are pretty warm. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to put the bolster forward, straight and center, and we're going to lower down on top of it. Okay. So the dynamic doesn't stop quite there. We're going to lower down so that the ribs touch and our lowering abilities are all unique. So I want you to try to experience where your hands are touching very lightly on the floor. So it's not forcing into your palms. It's not that the body weight is in your hands. The body weight is in your torso, your pelvis. So as the hands now formulate a plan, you're going to open out the hands and find the opening so that the, the index fingers start to turn out. Everything starts to turn out like sealed hands. Okay. So as you push into your fingers wide, lift all the way into up dog. Or we could call this one seal dog. Okay. Or seal pop. Seal pose. Okay, so feel the arch in the back. 
Yeah, some of us will find that we feel it could be intense challenge-wise, but it's it's a nice thing to balance in your back. Okay, lower down, take rest, recover for a moment, which means we're going to put a block under our forehead. Okay, hands relax and into cactus. Belly moves with the breath. Massage the core into the bolster. Expand and contract your belly. Now, hands slide back, elbows kind of perk up, and then as you start to push yourself down into the hands, up into the torso, come up into cobra, so that the hands lift off the floor, and see if you can let your energy be rather gentle. You know, sometimes in observation of this one, um, is to kind of jump up the hands, like, oh yes, I have the direction, I'm not using the hands, but sometimes movement is its own language, right? Being fluid with um, and therapeutic with your movement in your body. I think it's something to strive so that you are actually comfortable in your body. So feel that communication, that kind of language, that barrier too. Hands are off of the floor, elbows are in by the sides. And then when you push down and you actually stretch your torso forwards, close your eyes and feel that experience in the waist. What does it feel like when you have a bolster under you? Right here. And now, in contrast, we're going to push into our hands to lift up our hips and move them back to neutral. And then move our props, pushing the bolster over to the side. It's easy to get a hold of that. I want you to have it easy to get. Okay. Now, when you come back to that position, your hands could be in seal pop, right? They could be turned out or they could be um, square on wherever they land, right? But feel into the roots of your fingers. Now, does the back feel different without the bolster? Do you feel more vulnerable, a little bit more arm output? You have to have more wattage in your arms. So when we come up, we're going to move our knees apart and then feel the knees apart with the feet straight back from them. So they're not tucked in together, the feet are apart. And then lean back. Hands reaching. Round your back up into a cat. And then come forward and move your arms to push the floor away as you lift up the heart. And keep going, go on into it. So your movement pattern is experiencing the wave of the spine, articulating, rounding, and massaging between the parts with movement. So give it several more rounds. And if you get to kind of a long spot and you feel like, oh my, Hips are, they just feel really tense on this pattern. What you might try is in between to a few hip circles where you simply are on all fours and you're just making circular shapes with the hips. So I visualize this as if there was a light moving down from my belly button to the floor. I'm just trying to make circles. Okay, that's all I'm doing, it's just making circles. Going in both directions. Still pretty centered, right, on your mat. You're not trying to push off in that knit while and things are just still centered on the mat. And the next time you center back, let's go ahead and take our blocks and apply the weight into the blocks. And step the right foot straight between them, right in the center. And let the toes on the left foot hook under and lift up the knee. Stretch back through that left calf. In fact, you might work for a moment if your blanket's really close to your foot, scoot it forward. You won't be on the blanket for a bit. So you're safe without needing that for right now. But feel the exchange of reaching back to the left foot to the bottom of the foot, trying to push down 
but alternately the right foot flexes and lifts up. You can see the right foot. You still will need your block under your left hand. Now, as I lean forward, I move to that lunge, knee above the ankle. Oops, just try to keep it above the ankle, not over the toes, just above. And then as you lean back, heel down, toes up, head down. Continue on, inhale, look forward, over, and exhale, spine stretch. Inhale forward, exhale back, toes up, right foot, left heel down. Again, inhale front, exhale back. Now one more time when you reach forward, let's turn to our left, toes, sets turning left, both hands move in between that setting turning for a wide stance. And with that wide stance, encourage your foot placement to be spanning your heels out and your toes turning a little inward. So stretch your feet to stretch your lower legs. Send your hips back and reach your blocks far forward. So you're in a wide downward dog. Now the hands could lower down on the blocks to the flat height. And then reach your hands forward, your hips back, and have a little bit of a belly scoop so you can feel the back muscles. Try to draw the kneecaps up, draw the muscles above the kneecaps to pull them up so there is the fibers of the thigh. So you want to stay in that forward bend, but do come into that when you draw the kneecaps up. So you're going to feel that lift and that stride, and the seat is reaching back. So you still have that experience of muscle combination with flexibility. That's certainly what we're up to in the practice, is combining the two. Let the weight of your brain stretch all the way through the brain stem, through the neck. Now, as you move your head to your hands, so you're perched forward, so you're in a, a fairly vulnerable setting. I want you to move your blocks back in towards your mat and take a twist. So you're going to scoot your feet in a little closer so it's less wide, stance-wise, in your leg bones, okay? And then as you reach your right hand for the left leg, I want you to cross under. So it's a bit of this twist through. So my left hand is on my block, my right hand reaches to the left leg. I'm actually gonna let go of my hand on the block and pull myself to my left leg and stretch the left arm, turn it open, lift your hand up, twist. Feel the ribs turn, feel the hips back. Okay, now head down, switch sides, right hand on block, left hand to right leg. Hold with your left hand and lift the right arm up and twist. Turn the waist. Okay, you can look down to the floor or look up to your hand. Now lower the right hand back forward and take a moment here. Establish your center. Right, center yourself. Hands down, toes in. Bend your knees, scoop the back so you have that cat spine really round your back, chin to chest. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, round the back, chin to chest. This would be called wide stance cat pose, huh? And then as you come back, you're going to move your blocks with you to the front and to the right foot. So we're going to pivot and change. And let's take a forward bend in between. So 
Left foot, although we have been forward bending, huh? Left foot to the right foot. So that would mean Uttanasana, standing forward fold with the feet close. Now, if you can bring your feet a little closer so they're a little closer and then hips just sit. And then as your sitting bones lift, take that lifting and then lower the chest to the legs and let your arms dangle by holding your elbows or letting them dangle down. Let your head's weight stretch your spine. A few more seconds here. Feel the bottoms of the feet, and then when you get your blocks, you're going to set them under your hands and step that right foot back, press into the heel. So stretch back to that right calf, and then lift up the left foot, toes up. Flex and bend, lunge forward. And then flex back. So alternating, going forward and back to a lunge and a reverse lunge. Okay, blocks are under the hand, any height you would like. If you want to lower your blocks, that's fine. But get the feel of alternating and the freedom to have the back foot how you want it, whether when it lowers downwards, it's turned out a little bit, or it's parallel. Feel the influence in the ankle joint, right? You want to feel all the way through the base of your leg. And then last time we lean back, take a moment to press back into the right heel, but also feel the sitting bones reach back. Left foot lowers down into a new step here, okay? So, take the bolster, cross it under your left leg, okay? Step the right foot forwards, take a seat back onto your bolster by either using your blocks or taking a squat to sit down. And then let's reach back for our blanket and Toss it farther back. It will end up where it ends up, and you'll use it under your head at some point. But first, we're going to take this so uh, that we have our bolster under the back of our pelvis. So I tend to slide quite far downwards, and my feet are wide enough so it's almost like a squatting position. Okay, that's how I got into the pose. So I'm going to move onto my back this way. I'm going to put a block between the knees or a ball. You can choose. It's really up to you as far as the focus of the object. Um, if you don't have a ball, you got a choice, but the ball is kind of that. It's really a nice structure for um, uh, feeling that it has some texture that you can push and organize your thigh muscles. Looking for the word for it, but it'll come at some point. Okay, so when I lower back, my knees flow up and I slide my blanket underneath my head. And I'm going to slide it into my shoulders today. Right? So it's right to the top of it, right to the shoulder edge, not under my shoulders. Okay? okay? So it's the, the texture that's responsive. Right in the ball. It has a little more responsive texture so that you can use the inner thigh and the groin muscles. So if you've got the ability to change it, use the ball. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze into the ball of the block and I'm going to lift my feet, float them up, and then move my knees to the right. So I want you to try to keep that awareness of internal leg pressure and the knees are going to the right still. Now before you, you choose to kind of fall off your bolster, that's your limit. And then come back center and start to carry it into the other side. It's kind of like a game of spinal play here. And if you feel that you're pushing into the object, that's fine, it will retrieve the core, but it's not required.
Now breathe in center, breathe out to the right. Breathe in center. If your feet are flopped down, that's fine. Breathe out to the left. Breathe into the center. Okay, now if you have the, the capacity here to just let the legs stretch up, feel when the legs are up and the feet are free of any pressure on them. They're just simply upside down. That's it. Not being stepped on, not being sanded. No way to induce, but feel if you can induce a state of kind of selective concentration on the muscles on the inside of the legs, right? On the groins, the, the lymphatic drainage here through the, the legs. So intensifying that brush of the lymph. Okay, now I'm going to loosen up the pressure into the object, so I'm not going to focus on pushing into it right now. So what I'll have you do is take the object away and then feel the legs straight up at 90 degrees and then move them to 60. I want you to try to keep your heels, the inner heel, as if they're trying to push together. No illusion that there's an imaginary object there. It's just that they're touching it. Now come back up to 90, inhale, and then we'll go forward to 60 or 40, if you're comfortable with that. Now this is into the core. Now next time you come up to, to straight up with the legs, grab the belt and we'll place the belt so it's under the right foot and the left leg goes straight down and it's passive, left foot. So the only inspiration now that you have is the belt under your foot and the hope that this selection of movements will continue on into the hip. So I'm gonna encourage you to use both hands to actively pull the flesh of the part of the foot that has the belt and stretch it open. Like it's going off the bottom of the foot and moving, flowing out. Energetically, it flows out. Keep that lift of the heel if you're trying to push it up to the sky. And close off the belt so just your left hand holds it. And then carry that right leg over to the left. It's almost like it is an over carry. It's like this baggage that you're moving over and the more it goes left, the right leg, the more intensity is around the hip. Right? And so as it kind of grips around the joint, right, and we're moving muscles, right, to, to help the bones, we have to kind of move through the muscles and get a little bit closer into the bones. So the nerves will be sensed, you feel the sensations in the hip right now. Now, feeling when you push through the foot, you're gonna come back in center and swap sides, left foot up, right leg down. Keep it direct and thoughtful here for, kind of helpful for your foot. So pull on the belt and feel where the connection is at the ball. Emphasize your calf versus all hamstrings. If you can be partial to closing off the belt, holding it with the right hand, and then as your left leg crosses your left arm, opens and that left hip you know the sensation through the hip could be monitored by giving yourself a little more slack on the belt or then your left leg shift over and downstream feel the waist feel the belly they're different 
It's nice to do twists in all the ways we have today, like we did some line to our side, a few motions, and we do quite a few sitting. And then in a refined state, it's a nice way to, to blend all the parts because your upper body can be so interested in this pose, helping open the chest. Now with bending through the left knee, take one more in-breath here, full pull with your right hand, and then push over with the left foot. Okay, now bend through the left knee. And then what we'll do is we're going to remove the belt. And as you bring your knees to point up center, bring both feet up. So this will be a legs up version with no stand. Okay? So what you'll do is you'll have no props really besides your bolster height. But I want you to try to do a pattern with the arm. So grasp onto a block. You need something that has definition on the sides. And as you lift it up towards the legs, right, towards the, um, the shins, when so you really reach up with your hands and forward, feel the upper parts of your back and try to look closer to the legs. Now, if you touch the legs with the block, I want you to move the legs a little farther away from the block, but keep the block right where it's at. Okay. Press down into the tailbone. Move the feet a little farther forward, concentrate on the core. Now, if you've moved all the way to 60 degree angle and you're, you're past your, your, and your max here, then you would stay with that. If you haven't, see if you can move the feet a little farther forward. Now, the feet stay the same, the arms go overhead. Okay, claim your ribs here. Okay, the block is maybe going to touch down, but I want you to try to remove it from the core so your hands are clutching the sides of your block. Now when the legs go straight back up, let's try it one more time. Legs forward maybe to 40 degrees. Just be very cautious in your back if it, if it feels connected and supported. You're fine. If your stomach is shaking, your core is feeling a little bit challenged, that's, that's okay. Try for that. Now bend your knees and bring your block up. Inhale and exhale. Last time you're going to bring your legs forward, 60 degree arms overhead, little challenge, and then pull the knees in the block towards the ceiling. Okay, so move the block aside. You can do that on the side for fun, for homework. That's homework. Knees to chest, and then carefully push your bolster away. And feet on top. Block between the knees. Or ball. I don't know. What do you want? Push into your feet, or press down to your feet to lift your hips up and maintain that balance. Your legs were just kind of in this form, right? You were on the bolster, your legs were forward to an angle. So this isn't that different with the energy in your pelvis. It kind of knows um, direction and range, but doesn't intellectualize it like up here, okay? So feel that angle and the general direction it went and it is. And then lift your hips, lift your hips, lift your hips. Hands down, palms open on the floor. And then lower your spine down. Once the spine makes landing, push into your feet, push down to lift up. Okay? Now I want you to do a couple more draw bridges at your own leisure, whether your arms go overhead when you lift your hips the next time, or your arms stay down by your sides. It's up to you. So I want you to lift and lower, but feel the moments of being right at the peak of your lift and how far back it can motion to your 
shoulders, which will feel a little bit of the blanket here, right? And then lower the spine. Scoop it into the belly like you're trying to scoop the tailbone um, under. And then once your spine and your pelvis spine is landing, you're going to bring your knees in and move the ball or block, and you're going to kick the bolster to the right side of your mat and actually cross the left leg on top of it and put a ball or block um, at the sacrum. If you don't have a ball, maybe you can pass on this idea if you don't want a block kind of poking into it. So as you add your sand to your left external thigh, use the programming here to find a little interest in your, your, your lower tummy here. So I'm going to move my bolster downwards so I can feel a little bit of a different stretch in my tummy. So I'm going to stretch my right foot down and I'm reaching through the heel. Now I can bend my right knee and try to reach my heel the other direction. Or I can let the leg be generally in the direction of my straightish on the side. That's where I'm going to end with that straightish on the side. So be here and let your arms open and receive the pose. These last three poses are going to be about receiving the pose. How can we set it up? So, so many parts of the internal orders you can give to your body to surrender into the pose and receive the benefits. environmentally in the body. Now, if the left shoulder is making a little bit of an imprint, feel if there's any other portion of the left side of the chest that could Dial into it, opening, counterspin the, the heart over to the chest, into the arm. Now I'm coming out of this one. Let's try to let the arm be part of it. So I want you to remove if you have the ball away first. Okay. Left arm is going to stretch either open or back. Straight back besides your head. And then as you move the sand aside, feel as you roll into your back, your left foot is going to lift, stay up, and you're going to slide your right foot in and cross the left ankle to the right knee and bring both arms overhead. Okay? And try to stay with that pattern with the left knee moving over. Stamp into your right foot so that the right side of the spine can start to press into the floor. I'll feel the difference in left and right side of the spine. Open your left hip. Okay, now as you uncross and switch sides, knees to chest, hands grasping on to the bolster, put it over to the left side of your mat and then cross the right leg over to that bolster when you're ready. Left leg down, right leg over. Ball, where did it go? Place it to your sacrum. And then use the opportunity to feature the sand on the leg. Right? We're gonna feel the sand on this portion before we get it on our feet next. I want you to feel the, the bands of energy in the leg. And rather than how does it look, isn't that nice to be in your space and situate your sand, just how it feels fun, if you're going to use it at all. But let it just get to a place for fun. That's fun to accept it. And then let the right arm open. Let your head roll to the opposite side of the bent top leg. This can sometimes make it easier 
to bend the left knee when your upper body spine is But you know, if your left leg being basically straight feels better for your spine, then you take that pose. So part of these, these ways of leading ourselves to a practice is sampling variations that you might do at your own pace, at your own time, but rely on a given sequence that you can uh, follow and then maybe you reflect on it another time, but taking the shapes, receiving them at this point. A few more moments here. Feel the right thigh and moving and crossing and touching to the bolster. Now moving the ball. If you don't want to leave the pose yet, you really do not have to. You're free to be into it all the way through the end if you'd like. Even. And then as I move my stand, I'm going to situate to feel the body rock back center, right foot to the left knee, knee open, arms back. And now it's this hip hinge that's a bit tricky and lights up the wall, right? To feel this area being able to open and not get. Um, kind of congested or, or stiffer or more dehydrated in this part of the joint. So I want you to notice that when you get upside down, then you can choose legs up for your final pose at the wall. You can put your legs over a chair, over a couch, over a bed, so that they're high. That's the idea. So if you don't want to use the wall, that's okay. You can put your legs, but try to get them higher up than on a bolster today. But the idea with the wall is that the hips are elevated too. So if you are going to use a couch or a chair, you're going to want to get your uh, bolster and your pelvis anyway. But for those of us that are going to go towards the wall, I want you to roll to the side. And take your bolster to the base of the wall and add a blanket so that your blanket will be under your head. Okay, so come on into the shape. Few different ways of getting into this. There are ways you can actually somersault into this pose. Um, some people like to lay on their back and scoot up to the wall. So I find it works better for me. I have my sand nearby. I'm going to sit on the ball here. Bring my sitting bones to the wall. That's key for me is that, oh, sitting bones. That means I have to kind of crouch down on this, get my rear to the wall. And then try rolling up and let the legs either turn and feel them kick up to the wall. And as they swing up, the swing is over once you get your legs up. There's not going to be a lot of swinging range. So once you find your range, feel your feet and then get your sand on the soles. If you're on a chair with your legs or a couch, what you could use is your sand on your shins, right? So you have that support for the circulation down to the groins, actually through the groins, into the pelvic floor, and then it passes into that openness of the Belly, the diaphragmatic breathing is emphasized here. So once you get here, it can affect you in ways of breathing, of circulation, and your sinuses. So I would encourage you to center and to bring your elbows open and your hands back. If you have something to put over your eyes besides your eyelids, that might be helpful to close your eyes. And have a little curtain of darkness over them to calm the mind. But feel where your feet flex. 
Feel a little separation at your knees. If you tend to be knock kneed on this pose, it's not a great thing to contribute to. So you might move your knees a little bit apart or separate the feet a little bit on the sand. So it's easiest to keep that, that space. Lower eyes from top to bottom. Experience that inner motion of breath. Now feeling the positioning of the arms, move them back overhead so they're straight behind you. Let them be rested, right? Resting through the shoulder, all the way into the hands. Now, as you replenish the hips, and there's one extra piece for some of us, it's the neck. So feel the back of your head centered on the blanket. Make sure it's not too arched in your neck, it's supported. As you bend your knees and you reach your hands to the legs, I want you to shift your sand away. And then bring your feet together, your knees out, whatever surface your legs are on. It works for this one, cobbler's pose. Knees out, feet together. Feel like the tailbone is lightly lifted, right? It's upside down. It's in this version of openness to the lower back. Now, as the knees move in towards your ribs, hug them in. Hug the knee pose. Hug some knees. And then very simple, let's roll to our side. And when you feel your body roll, pause. And then use your hands to bring yourself up. And take a seat with a position of spine centering. Back muscles feel a re-lengthen. So feel like you can re-lengthen up your potential from your seat. But if you're using the, the inversion to help lift up the midsection, Feel like you got some hydration from the last position. And then let your hands rest in your lap. Feel the shoulder center back. And then the mind releasing and surrendering down to the heart center. Scan the feeling in the core of the body down to the belly and let the belly soften and the hands lift up to the heart. Palms together, inhaling and exhaling. Feel the energy of those in the practice in each of our homes. Let's unite our breath. May this practice be a benefit to others. Inhale slow and with exhalations, Bowing into the space behind your heart. Namaste. Thank you. Okay.